Now for the lesson you've been waiting for, how to reestablish your credit with new accounts. Well, I know everyone wants to jump into this part. It's important to take the time to review your credit report and fix any errors. Old mistakes will mess everything up, so that's why I've waited until lesson number eight to talk about establishing new credit accounts. Before I explain what types of credit you need to rebuild your credit score, remember to always wait a few weeks or a few months between credit applications. New credit may temporarily lower your credit score, so you don't want to apply for a second credit card right after you got your first. Okay, let's talk about what kinds of credit you need. The single most important tool for establishing new credit or rebuilding credit is a credit card. Why? Well, because credit cards tick the box for three out of the five factors we discussed in lesson three that can positively or negatively impact your credit score. Here's why. Using your credit cards, then paying off balances regularly helps you build a positive payment history. As your balances revolve up and down, credit bureaus can tell if you can control how much debt you use, and the longer you use a credit card wisely, the better your credit score will be. A loan will help improve your credit score, but the loan payment each month is fixed, and you either pay it or you don't, so it doesn't give you as great an opportunity to demonstrate that you are able to handle credit. A credit card is different because it's revolving credit. You control it. You decide when to make payments and how much to borrow, up to your credit limit, of course. That's why a credit card is the best predictor of your ability to handle credit and why a credit card has the most impact on your credit score. So, can you get a credit card even before you're finished your bankruptcy or consumer proposal? Yes. If you really need a credit card during your bankruptcy or proposal, you can try getting a secured credit card. A secured credit card is backed by a deposit you give to the credit card company. They'll use this deposit if you stop making payments, which is why they're willing to lend more to risky borrowers like someone in a consumer proposal. Getting a secured card can help you jumpstart your credit rebuilding enough to increase your chances that you qualify for a regular credit card after your bankruptcy or proposal is finished. Be prepared though. Not everyone who filed a bankruptcy will be approved. Approval depends on your current credit worthiness, including factors like your current income. Talk to your trustee or credit counselor to see if applying for a secured card while bankrupt is a good idea in your situation. Start by requesting a small authorized limit, say $300 to $1,000, depending on how much you can save for the deposit. At the time of this recording, in my experience, Capital One is the best for active bankrupts, while for active proposals, Capital One or Home Trust Visa are more likely to approve your application. These cards generally come with a monthly or annual fee. Both charge high interest rates, so be sure to pay your balance in full each month. Again, your trustee or credit counselor can advise you on which card is best for you in your unique situation. Most major cell phone providers report to the credit bureaus. Paying your cell phone bill on time during your bankruptcy or proposal is very important. While it doesn't help your credit score increase because the payment is small, paying late will hurt your credit score a lot. Don't be late with your payments. After you receive your discharge or finish your proposal, you can start thinking about the 2 plus 2 plus 3 rule we talked about back in lesson number 2. As a reminder, the goal, if you want good credit so you can qualify for a low interest car loan or mortgage, is to have two active established accounts, maintain a good payment history for two years on those accounts after your bankruptcy or proposal is complete, and those two accounts should have authorized credit limits of $3,000 or more on each card. You might get credit faster, but it may not be prime credit. It will likely carry a higher interest rate and may not look good on your credit report to future lenders. So here's what I would do after my bankruptcy or proposal was finished. I start by getting a copy of my credit report and correcting any errors. That's key. Then I'd apply for a regular unsecured credit card. Certain lenders are more willing to lend to someone with low credit like Capital One or Canadian Tire or what's called Triangle now. If you don't have good enough credit to qualify for an unsecured card, try applying for a secured credit card if you haven't already done so. 
And if one of those lenders was included in your proposal or bankruptcy, it's probably best to avoid them during your rebuilding process. Pick another credit card lender. After six months of making payments on time, on your first new card, you have an increased likelihood of being approved for a second credit card. This can change, but as of the time I'm recording this video, credit card providers like MBNA, TD, CIBC, and PC Financial, in that order, are good options assuming those creditors were not included in your bankruptcy or proposal. Let me emphasize again, if your goal is to improve your credit score, the sequence of events is this. Clean up any mistakes on your credit report, apply for one credit card with a small limit, say $300 to $1,000, wait a few months to apply for a different small limit credit card, wait a few months to ask the first card to up your limit, and then wait a few more months to ask the second card to increase your limit. It takes time, but that's the safest way to increase your credit score. If you already have a car loan, you may already have a decent credit score, so you may not need a second regular credit card. As long as you're making your car payments on time, this loan already shows you can manage a healthy mix of credit. Increase your limits slowly. Asking for a higher limit is asking for more credit, which may mean a hit on your credit report. If your credit card provider offers you a limit increase without you asking, well, then take it if it brings your unsecured limit up to $3,000 or higher. A common question I hear is, well, should I pay an annual fee for a credit card? There are low credit lenders that will offer people in a bankruptcy or a proposal a credit card for a high annual fee. I generally advise that you avoid those. It might help you get a card a little faster, but it's at a high cost. Remember, no matter what you do, it will take two years following the completion of your program to have fully reestablished your credit. Paying a high annual fee to get a credit card a little earlier isn't gonna help a lot. So the lesson is work slowly to rebuild new credit accounts while always paying on time and keeping your balances low.